I graduated from film school at San Francisco State. Oh, you did? Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. All so right. that was in 95, and I was going to go to uh, L.A. and, and um, sell movies. Jesus. My foundation came from uh, film. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Great. So like you've learned composition and such like that. It's so funny because when I think of film, I think of like you're 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 having a narrative and yeah. you have like um like forms and figures and like yeah. really <coughs> hardcore uh compositions that are identifiable, right? Um uh, and yeah. with your paintings they're so uh, uh, expressionistic, emotionally expressionistic. You know, you're, yeah. you're delving into like uh, modes of color and um, yeah. texture and, and such like that. So, what made you move on to painting? Um, I just finished rereading *The Air Conditioned Nightmare* by Henry Miller, and so I was like trying to figure something out that he was talking about in the book. And so I went on Google, and one of his watercolors popped up just yeah and i knew that he did that i yeah. just but i had forgotten about it and so when i saw that watercolor i i it just was like the guy does whatever he wants mm -hmm. you know in in some ways and and you know he can he can just and so i just like hollered out to my wife i'm like <clears throat> Uh, order, I think she was on Amazon or something. I'm like, oh, you know, give me some watercolors and brushes. She's like, okay. And then the, the, after a couple of weeks, it was just too lightweight for me, watercolors. I, mm. I need like deep, you know, and, and then also uh, a medium you can really fuck up and fix. Yeah. Like yeah, oils. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, so and oil is like mud. It can be really buttery. Yeah. Right? So you're just like, you know, you're doing something and you're just like, oh, my God, wait. You know, and you grab something and oh, you can fix it with watercolors. It was like all of a sudden it was dry and fixed. I was like, yeah. I'm not good enough for that. You yeah, know, yeah, so yeah. I, I, specific type yeah, I just absolutely. switched. I just bounced. Cool. I, yeah, I forgot yeah. that. And then so. Um, but yeah, it was it was actually that um, that one particular watercolor that's awesome that uh, henry miller inspired you to paint and you were right at the time. yeah i mean so you know that's a great story yeah. uh, did you ever uh, go back and kind of look at different artists uh techniques like jackson pollock or clifford still or anybody like that Have, did you since then kind of or did you ever have like a, a sense of uh, yeah. these type of painters yeah i mean the the first thing i started to do was dripping drip paint because uh and it wasn't because of what jackson pollock had done in the past it was more of like i recognized a freedom there that i think i needed to um like exploit so um and when i was a kid i i've always studied art um, I'm self-taught. I've never taken a class. I mean, I went to film school, but that was all film. I mean, I never took an art class with paint brushes and all that stuff. So never. Um, but I always appreciated and studied it as much as I possibly could on my own time. Um, I have a terrible memory, so I can't tell you, you know, uh, certain specifics on anything like that. But, um, but it was just the move, the movement of the abstract, uh, gestures and and how he was finally i think at toward the end of his career because before that jackson you know he was doing kind of <clears throat> just whatever they think else was doing but um it was just the motion and you know i didn't i never really understood his artwork until maybe you know six or seven years ago when i went to a, a uh, reserve the bonnie dune reserve um, and there was a bunch of dead manzanita everywhere, uh, mm. not dead or burnt, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I, I was, uh, walking with my, my kids and, and my wife and nieces and nephews and stuff. And I just made like a, I just looked at something and it, it was like, it hit me and I don't, I'm not like that. Like not, very yeah. few things like shock me, you mm -hmm. know, I, I don't, I'm not like that. But when I saw the manzanita near the ground and it was all burnt and all these lines and then there was colors coming through, mm -hmm. it was like, 
oh, you know, like. Yeah, that sounds beautiful. I was like, yeah. I get, I finally get what he was doing with his automatic art. Mm-hmm. And then I looked at mine, and I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that at all. I'm just like <laughs> trying to figure out how colors work together, you know, and if I got lucky, something would be cool. Yeah. And so then I kind of was like, all right, I, and then I switched over to um, brushes. I worked in the valley for 10, 11 years, um, and I just recently got another gig in Santa Cruz, so I don't have to actually go Wait. into the valley anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I would, there would be this huge contrast of me driving down the hill and then with the um, homeless problem that's been mm. coming about in the last three or four years, five years. And then just kind of the trash and the, and the, what I've noticed of kind of a little bit of the decay in, in the valley uh, that affected me. Um, and then I would come back and be in like, be at the beach or be in the redwoods or be up here. And so in my paintings, you'll see like, uh, even like the one behind us is, it's a city on fire mm, mm. and and so uh i i i've noticed that i do put in some urban situations in my paintings and then uh and then natural mostly natural but somewhere in there i try to give a little bit of it of an urban um effect i think yeah. but i don't overthink my paintings in mm. fact i never really even plan them out yeah, that's why I was going to ask. Yeah, like you don't no, plan it out. No, nothing so ever. So it's, it's sort of like you don't have a set t- a time. Like no. It's more like spontaneous. Is it? So well, would you say it's like, well, would you say it was like emotional? Like I've got it. I've got to do this. I see these colors. I see this color combination or whatever. And you just like, you got to do it. Or It doesn't get, it gets that way. But it gets that way when I'm in the studio. Like if, if I'm on the couch with my wife and we're, having dinner and watching a movie she'll be like you know go paint and i'm kind of like oh i just want to you know i just want to cuddle you know, i just want to she's like go paint and then you know and then i go in there and you know i do my thing and then and then once once i start rolling then all of that happens yeah, like it's a rapture yeah it's like a and i don't i when i start to think about something it i fuck it up and so I just stopped and I still do that. And I go, what are you doing? You're trying to make something that, so I have to push that out of the way. And then I just, it just, whatever happens is coming through and I don't, I just go with it. And, and if it looks good, um, toward the end of the night, I'll stop, mm-hmm. you know, and, mm-hmm. but I won't stop until something looks right. It's hard to explain. That's mm. just how I am. Mm. So, um, but I only, uh, the spontaneity is very well scheduled because, um, you know, I'm a father first, a husband first, and, and then, you know, I have to work full time. And so when I don't, when all those things are taken care of, then I can get into the, into my studio and probably, I don't know, it just depends, maybe 10 to 12 hours a week. Yeah, you know, yeah. but but the hours that I'm in there, um, I can get I think a lot done. And you're I, immersed. Yeah, and yeah. I can concentrate in in um, on what not to do. If that makes any sense. I mean, you know, but every painting has its own story. The painting is doing it. I I don't. Mm-hmm. The painting is more powerful than what I'm doing. I'm I'm mm-hmm. just kind of following its lead, mm-hmm. and then when it goes totally bad I put it aside and let it dry and scrape it off and start over but that uh, usually that doesn't that doesn't happen too often but it does um but um yeah I think my story the story of it all would just be to um you know be kind and 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 um you know love the people that are around you and by my work I would hope to see that like maybe just makes things a little bit easier in the world yeah. For myself. I, and for well, everybody so, else. you know, I have a quote here that I, I've been kind of like looking and uh, researching like your, uh, what you put out on uh, social media. Mm-hmm. And I love this quote because when I heard it, 
I was like, yeah, that's, 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 that sums up that, or not sums it up, but it, that's definitely this painting, you know? And uh, this, uh, one of your uh, followers or friends said, I see heavenly and godly things, but also devils and dark things. Yeah. So yeah. do you, you know what painting I'm referring to, right? And hopefully uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that painting. Well, it's, it's actually not a painting. It's my wall in my studio. Oh. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but it could have been one of my paintings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I thought for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it might be part of one because they're all stapled up in there and, and they're all kind of all over the place. But um, I will start pretty in, pretty much telling myself this is going to be either white primer or black primer. Oh, okay. White or okay. black. The last one I started um, was gray. Uh, black and white and gray and then um, you know it's uh, sometimes it's uh, I just look down at the floor of my studio and see what a lot of colors I have left from the last painting <laughs> so if I have like a lot of um, yellows and oranges that you know and they're still in the tubes uh -huh. then I'll go cool I'll just grab the ones that are literally filled with oil okay that I can gotcha. work with because yeah. I'll look over in the corner and they're all emptied out and yeah. thrown out so that I, well, that's all that's left so I won't I, it, that could be a, situ a certain situation or um, but no I mean I just I don't I just do it I, I prime it and then um, once it's usually at night when other when mm -hmm. the kids and and everyone's asleep and the dogs are not barking anymore uh, and then I go off I just, okay. I just go How do you know off. when to stop? So, um, unlike, unlike a painting like this, what I'll do is I will literally go from one corner and go up toward the left or to the right, and I will kind of take pictures of my, the, uh, take pictures in my head of what the colors are as I oh, go up. Oh, the steam of the colors? Yeah, mm -hmm. and then... Um, and if I see anything that doesn't look right, uh, I'll keep going. But I'm not a believer in, you know, uh, a painting is never finished type of philosophy. Mm. I, I think that's bullshit. I, <laughs> I, I, I think that you do have to stop. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess you could not. I mean, I guess you could keep going. But then if you did that, I mean, for me, I'd just paint one painting, right? Because <laughs> I would never stop. But no, I, I, I don't, uh, I, it's a feeling. I just yeah. know when to stop. And sometimes if I think I'm not going to stop and I know I should, I will get it out of my studio and give it to my wife or, or just get it out of my face and put it out here on one of the walls and just be like, enough. And I, sometimes I do have to tell myself enough because, um, you know, especially if I get drunk, you know, and I'm in there painting like drunk, drunk. Then I'm just like, dude. What's your what's your liquor? Stop. <laughs> uh, and right now it's Mescal, but it used oh, to be gosh. it used to be Hennessy. Um, oh. I know. But I'm good. I'm not. I don't. I, you know. Yes. I, I I try to. You know. Some nights I go a little too far, but. Um, yeah. Well, combining the oils and. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's like a bomb went off in that place. I mean, I walk. I get up, and my wife would be like, "What are you doing? It's like all over the place." And those would be the nights I'm not even drunk. I'm like, you know. So, but no, I mean, uh, not stopping is. Uh, I mean, you have to stop. You, yeah. You have to stop. The painting is telling you when to stop you know as cliche as that sounds i mean that's it, it's true i mean i have to just kind of back away and start something else but yeah um now nah, i just don't really have uh you know it's all automatic art i don't mm -hmm. i don't think about any of it until i'm probably halfway in the middle of it um and then hopefully at the end you know something good or pleasing will come out for myself first at the end and then if not you know i don't care <laughs> i'll just do another one you know uh, i would tell anybody to like yeah i mean put your put everything into it mm. you know and 
then who cares if it if if it comes out the way you like it or not like it but if you give your whole heart and soul and, and all of your everything um, I think something will come back I think you'll see something from that well thank you so much thank Mom. you I appreciate yeah. this interview and me too thank you very yeah. much all of you guys it was great Yes, we have Tony and Chris yeah. and, and Julie, our art editor for Say Zora. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Great. Thank, no, you. thank you. Can I ask a question? Oh, yeah. Sure. Given your, your film degree background, what films or what film techniques or, or inspire your painting? Um, well, so this might be a little bit of a longer question. You can just edit it out, I guess. Yeah. So when I, I graduated in 1995. Okay, and then I, I went to Europe, and uh, my uh, brother died of AIDS when I was in Paris. Oh. So I had this whole idea of like, I'm going to get my degree, go travel and whatever, and then come back and then move to L.A. and just start working somewhere somehow. Um, and the... But when I was in school, like, the little bit of the conflict I was having was, you know, I loved all of these random abstract um, independent like films from like Germany and, and, you know, Salvador Dali did a really mm -hmm. odd one. And, mm -hmm. and I was like, the avant-garde styles were like, I'm like, that's what I want to do. And then back in my head, I'm like, dude, no one's ever going to buy some, I mean, you know, because I wanted to, you got to make money, you know, I, I wanted to make a living. So I wasn't like always going to be broke or driving some crappy car that I've driven forever, you know, until recently. But, um, but it was always the avant-garde, the black and whites, the odd angles, you know, um, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. That, I mean, just those weird, I don't even know if I pronounced it right, but just like the really abstract shots and, and um, I, I remember there was one film, I don't know if it was, might have been French, and it starts off completely black, okay? And then it starts to come out, and it looks like hair, and then it is hair, right? And it's a baby, a woman giving birth to this ba a baby. And it was like, you don't even know what it is because it's so close up at first, and then it finally pulls out, and the head coming out of her is like maybe 10 minutes, you know? So those, just the image, those images just blew me away. Blew, and that's the kind of stuff that really turned me on. I mean, I love all the other movies that we all like, right? I mean, and respect, you know, the, I mean, like the, the, the photography and Apocalypse Now, like the last half hour is just mm -hmm. genius. I mean, I, I watch that movie all the time just because of the colors. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the colors did draw, drew me to that, you know, but I think it's just kind of the abstract stuff that I studied over those four or five years. Mm. And I, you know, but. Yeah, it's interesting how it plays in with your art. Too. Yeah, I mean, I it's never. abstract. Yeah. In, in, I mean, I just never thought about it really that much until, you know, you guys started asking me. But, yeah. when, but when I look back on it, I definitely go, oh, yeah. You know, there, there is a connection. Music. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. you play instruments? I used to play the, <laughs> I played the guitar for about two years, three years, and I was horrible. <laughs> I mean, I was horrible. I was horrible. We had a, I had a little band with, a little band with my buddy, <laughs> you know, but you'd get so stoned, <laughs> you would actually convince yourself that it was actually good, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And then you look back and you're listening to it and you go, what the fuck? <laughs> But it got me through college, yeah, <laughs> yeah. just jamming on my guitar. That was terrible. I can't, I don't mean, I, yeah, no. Nah. What do you mean got you through college? Did, you, did actually people give you money? No, 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 <laughs> just the, it was like the meditation, like the stress, oh, you know. Oh, okay, the stress. Of yeah, <laughs> it's like painting now. It's just, you know, yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's free the, therapy. Well, yeah. it's not free, but it's therapy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I, no. <laughs> and I don't think I'm a renaissance mind at all. I think uh, I just Dabbed loved, in a lot of stuff. Yeah. But I think this is what I'm best at so yeah. far because yeah. I wasn't, I mean, I don't know about my writing, but um, this I can see that like, oh, there's something there. Yeah. You know? Oh, most definitely.